Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. So Ten Hag has been sacked by Manchester United and Ruben Amarim looks like he will be the next manager of Manchester United. We've had the special one, we've had the chosen one, we've now got the next one. And the brilliance of this community is it's for everybody. So I want to know in the comments uh, a little bit of research. How are you feeling, uh, especially if you're not a Manchester United fan, how are you feeling about this? How do you look at it from the outside in? Because as Manchester United fans, uh, there's a few things that have sort of taken us by surprise. Not that Ten Hag ultimately ended up being sacked, but how quickly Manchester United have acted. This reminds me of what Villa did with Emery. I've mentioned it a few times where they sacked Gerrard. It wasn't working. They had a manager that they wanted it to work with. They spent money on him. It wasn't working at the start of the season. They sacked him and they went to Villarreal. They paid the release clause. They brought Emery in and they never looked back. Man United looking to do something very similar there. But also, it shocked people on how quick Ineos have acted. But the thing about Ineos is, Sir Jim Radcliffe is the guy at the top of Ineos. He hasn't got time to uh, wait around. He hasn't got time to just write the season off and give it to an interim. You've got to move quickly. And, and that has been impressive from Manchester United, in my opinion. But have they chosen the right guy? What are your thoughts on that? When you look at Amarim, there was talk of Liverpool's interest that didn't follow through. Was that because of the release clause? I don't know. I think Liverpool fans sounded like they liked the idea of Amarim after Klopp had uh, announced he was going to go. But obviously they ended up with Arna Slot and he stayed at Sporting Lisbon. We also heard that he went to West Ham and they chose Lopetegu. And then we've heard in recent times that Manchester City were looking at him and the huge hints were there. In fact, Man City are playing Sporting Lisbon next week uh, in the Champions League by which time it looks like Amarim won't even be there for Man City to maybe have a bit of a conversation. Man City will not get Amarim because they've got Pep Guardiola and Pep Guardiola is never going to announce that he's leaving now so that Man City can get Amarim. That's just a timing issue. I think with Amarim, what he's done um, in a short period of time, especially at Sporting, taking them from a club to their first trophy and you know their first title in nearly 20 years is, is, is remarkable. And he certainly is one of those hipster managers that we hear about like there's plenty of those about and Manchester United have clearly moved quickly to secure his services uh, obviously there's links to Bruno Fernandes Agate formerly played for Amarim at Sporting um, but there are also similarities with Ten Hag some Manchester United fans want to refute that um, but the, but you know what as somebody that backed Ten Hag to the end I felt a change was needed of course it was obvious that it wasn't going to change around um, we are in a yet another similar situation whereby we've gone for a manager from a foreign league who's been very, very successful, who plays modernistic football with a high intensity, a focus on possession, chance creation, high line, etc., etc. Well, Ten Hag had all of that at Ajax and he had a lot of money at Manchester United and he failed. Now, Amrim comes in, very, very similar things. I think this is good. Because why should Ineos implement uh, a vision of a style of play and then sack Ten Hag and go for a completely different one? Um, I think it makes sense to bring a manager in that has similar principles. But obviously, similar principles doesn't mean he's a Ten Hag clone. It just means that it's another guy being given an opportunity to come into the Premier League with Manchester United and implement his style of play. And for every Ten Hag, there is, um, there is a Brighton manager. Um, and there is a slot of the way he slotted in at Liverpool. And I think Ange at Spurs has implemented a style of play. Spurs are Spurs still, but, you know, Manchester United may still well be Manchester United. I look at Manchester United, honestly, and I think um, Pep Guardiola himself would fail to implement his style of football with that specific set of players. And I think that is something that um, is really prominent for me, is that... You can look at the way Ajax played or the way Man City play or the way that Sporting play, but can you just slot a manager in and play like that? If it, if it was that simple, then everybody would be doing it. You've got to build the structure around, which Ineos are trying to do above the manager, and then you've got to structure it below. What if Amarim comes in and they say you've got to use Ruud van Nisseroy and Rennie Heck as your coaches? Hold on a minute. They were Ten Hag picks. I need my people. What if they say you've got to get the best out of Rashford and Bruno? Hold on a minute. We've been trying to do that for years. I want to pick the players that matter. Um, so look, it won't be about the manager. For me as a Man United fan, it won't be just about the manager. In fact, the manager is the only one who gets a clean slate. We've got a board that's been there for a few months now that need to prove their worth. And we've got players there that have been there for months, years, who need to prove their worth. They need to adapt. 
every other Premier League side in the top half of the table has a distinctive style of play and are able to implement it consistently, whether that's Aston Villa, Brighton, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, whatever. They're all doing that. Man United are one of the few clubs over the last few years that don't do that consistently. What is the style of play? So you go for a stylistic manager like Amarim and you look and wait and see if it's just going to be another cycle of two and a half years where another manager gets thrown under the bus whether he'll be given the tools to succeed, whether he'll be implemented, uh, whether he'll be forced, sorry, to utilise, you know, mistakes of the past. These are the key things. I'm looking at Ineos, I'm looking at the players, and I'm looking at what they actually give to Amarim to succeed. Because if we're giving another manager the same old issues, then I think Manchester United will fail. But if we're giving another manager the opportunity to succeed, however he wishes to do that, then I genuinely think change could happen. Um, I think it's also intelligent to capture the new manager bounce that's inevitable. Man United players are very predictable. The manager gets sacked, they suddenly start playing well because they want everybody to think that the manager was the problem. But many of us are beyond all that. We expect there to be a new manager bounce and I'd much rather it happened with the new manager rather than an interim where there is no future in that. So I like the way how Man United have acted quickly. There are no guarantees, there are huge risks. And to me, it really depends on what Ineos's strategy is now that they've got their own man, because Ten Hag was never their own man. What is their strategy going to be around the squad and players? And is it still going to be the case that you must get the best out of these players on big contracts? Or is it actually going to be we want you to get the best out of Manchester United. Um, but I'd be very interested to know what your thoughts are as well. Uh, obviously, Ten Hag is gone. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Did, did Manchester United make the right decision? Was Ten Hag solely to blame? But also the replacement. What does that make you feel as a Man United fan, as a Liverpool fan, as an Arsenal fan or whoever you support? How do you view Manchester United at the moment? Because let's be honest, West Ham had its um, intricacies. The VAR decision was a disgrace. Uh, some of the missed chances in the first half were a disgrace and that should have been a win for Manchester United. But it wasn't that one game. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. It was an accumulation of many different things. And looking back on it now, I don't think Manchester United were ever going to change it around consistently. So the change was inevitable. I said on Sunday night, whether they sack him tomorrow at Christmas or in the summer, he is going to get sacked because we've lost four games already. And you look at the games that are still to come, like Anfield, uh, Man City twice, Arsenal twice. Man United are easily going to lose 10 games in the Premier League this year. And that can't happen. So he will have to be sacked at some point. The fact that Ineos have acted quickly is... is um, is, is down to them. So what next? And can this manager be that guy? What are your thoughts on Amrim? Get your comments in below. Make sure you smash a like and subscribe. And I'll be very interested to read what you've got to say. Speak to you all in a bit. Take care.